Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. We're back here with your Leeds United evening news. If you haven't checked out the Leeds United morning news, please do so. A lot of updates, a lot of discussion over there. And uh, yeah, I think you guys will, will enjoy it over there as well. Something that I think you will uh, also enjoy is probably the three to four pieces of content that we're going to be putting on the Patreon account as of next week, uh, which is us up in a lot of what's going on over there. Uh, myself and Gabe, been of assistance and other people as well. So if you want to check out some bonus content, head on over there. I keep saying this, but all the proceeds go to the running of the channel, which you know can be expensive nowadays with uh, the cost of living crisis. So thank you so much uh, for all of you who are constantly on this journey with me. The, the subscriber rate has been fantastic. You guys are really enjoying it. We'll be back with a watch long 12.30 uh, for the Blackburn game. We're also going to have your post-match stuff. We'll have player ratings and all that good stuff uh, coming your way. So thank you uh, so much. <laughs> yeah, you can hear me, mate. You can hear me. Don't worry. I've sorted everything. We've switched a few bits with the microphone. We've downloaded some software. We've got the earphones in. So hopefully it should all be dandy. Let's hope so. At Leeds Hub, we're bringing in uh, Mourinho we're not my friend uh, good evening Connor from a, a very wet York I can imagine mate I don't know uh, what I don't know what's going on with the weather at the minute but it's supposed to be like this for another week another week and a bit blooming heck I know and um, but we're here we're to talk about the press conference we're here to also talk about some little bits of news that have been materializing throughout the day and um, yeah Rob thank you so much Matt top man yeah please make sure you're liking and subscribing everybody um, and we're going to continue with uh, the streams of course so let's get into your main news today. So what I wanted to discuss is Willie Nyonto, and we've spoken about him on the channel quite a bit, to be honest with you, but what we haven't spoken about is the attitude. Now, Willie's attitude in the summer wasn't good. We all know this. It wasn't good. It wasn't professional. He was refusing to play for Leeds United. Now, what this club is known for is a an attitude which is the hallmark that was given years and years ago by Billy Bremner, you know, side before self. And a lot of us didn't like what we saw from Willie Nyon. So I sometimes try to put the emotion to the side when it comes to football. But when I looked at what Willie Nyon did in the summer, I thought it's, this isn't repairable. With the type of fans that we have, which is loyal, working class, and a deep-rooted love for that club, I think Leeds is very unique in terms of you know, everyone's in it together. As, I've, as I say on the channel, it's a community. One club and all this sort of stuff, one city, one community, it's very rare. And I think what he did was horrendous, to be honest with you, from football in terms. He's young, he made a mistake, his agent, I think, was involved as well. But a lot of people were saying, a lot of my mates from back home were saying that, you know, he's done. I, I don't care what he does, he could score a hat-trick, he's done. Because I know that if push comes to shove ever again, he's he's gone. Now, the beauty about the press conference and what we heard today and what I wanted to say observing Willie Nyonso was that I've seen a lot from him which has given me a lot of hope with him and I think that's why I've been giving him a lot of a lot of leeway I think he's a great footballer I think he's a very decent footballer especially at this level but I think as well his attitude his celebration with Crescencia Somerville his celebrations with Rutter when he's been on the bench a lot of people may say Connor you can't really measure that but I think you can measure that. I think you're looking at that. And as I say, it's qualitative, isn't it? It's not quantitative. You can't measure it. It's not a goal. It's not an assist. But what it is, it's him showing that he cares. And I'm a massive fan of that. And Daniel Farker reiterated this in his press conference today. He said, what I like a lot about Willie at the moment is his attitude. He was always used to shine, always the poster boy. It's not easy when he's on the bench. But when we score and when we do positive stuff, the first one celebrating on the pitch is Willie. I like our team spirit. We are also happy for the teammates. It's also a good solution to find our best way. Um, he said when he was asked about getting Willie getting back in the side, he said he has to be stubborn and patient and keep going. He will be back at his best. I'm sure. Also, there was a, a little mention uh, in there as well from Daniel Farker of Jed Spence, being part of the, the celebration side when it comes to Leeds scoring a goal and the bench celebrating and the bench giving it this. And you have seen that from Jed Spence, which from a lone play is really, really nice to see as well. And it shows the team the team spirit really is built at Leeds right now. And that is something, as I say, that's the, you know, that you can't measure it with numbers, but what you can see is a real ethos that Daniel Farke has brought to this Leeds United side, and that's great credit to him. But when he was asked in the summer about Willian Jansson, who's very sheepish, 
you know, Willie's got one more chance left. Remember him saying that, I'm paraphrasing, but it was almost on the lines of he's got one more chance. And for me, he's not put a foot wrong. When he's come on, he's given he's given, you know, defenders problems. He might in some games have underperformed, but haven't they all in games? You know, we've seen that. But from what I see from Willie Nyonto, he's someone who's given 110% every single game. And I think that's great credit to him. Listen, it's the bare minimum, especially as a Leeds United player. Bare minimum, you give 100%. But I think he's given that extra 10% as well because he knows he needs to get the fans back on side. I don't think he'll be leaving in January. I don't think he'll want to leave in January. And I think we're, we're, I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. And I'm not seeing a petulant attitude, which I think we were potentially going to see I think a lot of us thought we were going to see that going into this season because of how he'd acted in the summer um yes uh Paul says uh Connor can you give my son a shout out his name is Ben it's his 11th birthday and I'm taking him to his first game on Saturday shout out to you Ben um I also want to shout out um another another um uh, member of 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 uh, the the Leeds United community, um, Divine Leeds has messaged me, um, and I just want to give a big shout out to Nick. It, it was his birthday yesterday, and I didn't shout out him on the stream yesterday, and I want to say a big apologies for that. But shout out Nick and shout out Ben. Uh, happy birthday to both of yours, uh, to both of you. Um, he's nineteen years old. How? Yeah, exactly. And I think you know. Good evening, Connor. Hi, Steve. Um, Nonto is a game changer. Connor has three <laughs> three outfit changes a day. I do, mate. I, I, I just never stick with one outfit. I don't know why. Uh, but there you go. The washing. Uh, this is why I've got no money because the washing machine is just constantly on because I'm constantly changing. But there you go. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give you know praise again to to to, to Willie Nonto, and it's great to hear those those um you know those sort of comments from Daniel Farker because we were at a very different point with Willie Nonto, a very, very different point not long ago. And I think I asked you and to be to be where he is right now, I think that's great news. Another thing that we uh, learned today uh, was Leeds United's uh, Christensia Somerville has been voted the player of the month for November for the second consecutive month. Uh, the 22-year-old's goal against uh, Rotherham and assisting each victory um, over Plymouth and Swansea has seen uh, the player win the vote for Leeds' best player through November. Somerville took 45% of votes from Leeds United fans, uh, while Rutter followed closer behind with 23, Rode on 18, and Glenn Kamara 13% as well. 45%, a massive majority. In my opinion, I'd have probably, uh, hi Ben uh, and Jay as well, um, but I'd have probably put the Silky Smooth Operator a little bit higher. I think the Silky Smooth Operator could have got second um, this month in particular. I think with Rutter, Rutter's been literally top tier for Leeds United but I do think the silky smooth operator Leicester onwards and obviously Le playing in that Leicester game has been arguably in games where Somerville hasn't been the best player it's been Kamara and I think the notoriety of Glenn Kamara will um you know w see him win that award uh, at some point especially with the performances that he's been putting in um but it's great to see Crescencio get the award I think he's higher, higher AJ um I think he's been so good um, he's so, so good. And um, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing with Somerville. Um, Rutter, I think he's gone off the boil a little bit, but that's 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 natural and he's still been performing. You know, I thought he was off the boil against Swansea. He gets a goal and assist. <laughs> and and, and what, arguably the goal of the season as well. Um, so really happy with what I'm seeing. Crescencio Somerville for me, is is our best player at the minute and i think that the vote is is worthwhile him getting it yeah i think i think it's obvious i think he gets leads up the pitch i think he's very direct when sometimes leads can be quite pedestrian at points in games he ignites the spark of leeds united at the minute and and yeah he's fantastic to see and as i say he's still so so young uh, enjoying the content, Connor. Thank you so much, Michael. Smash uh, some likes, guys. Yeah, there's 250 of you in the building, guys, on a very impromptu evening uh, um, Leeds United news uh, stream. So please make sure you're liking the content. It just it just means it's, it's ranked a little bit higher. Um, so Daniel Farker also said today that Joe Gelhart and Matteo Joseph could get, ch get a chance on the bench for Leeds United's trip to Blackburn Rovers. The White said to be uh, without Ian Paveda for three matches. Um, obviously, he's been called up to Colombia for the Venezuela and Mexico games. Um, and to be fair to Paveda, he has been a constant on the Leeds United bench. Farker said anyone who was not in the squad before, Gelhart, if he is available, Joseph, two players who deserve to be in the squad, always the same, a chance for a different player when someone is out. And I think, you know, the big discussion point that we need to have with regards to the youngsters is, you know, 
if that quality was at the back in terms of Matteo Joseph in particular, just that quality in terms of personnel, they'd have probably got a chance at the back. You know, there's an argument that they'd have got a chance in midfield, especially, you know, with, with rotation needed. But the attack for Leeds United is so good when you're having Jaden Anthony and Willie Nyonto coming off the bench. It's absolutely mental. It really, really is in terms of quality and calibre. And Ian Pervada, we've got to think at the start of the season, he was the main creative. Ian Pervada, a lot of people forget this. At the start of the season, he was very, very good. Very, very good. And I'm not saying he was, you know, one of the better players in the championship, but for Leeds, he was definitely one of the better players. And um, he seemed to be growing into it. And unfortunately for Pervader, it stalled for him. It did stall for him. And that's because Leeds went out and, and, and really started to build that attack and mould the sort of Hammond and Farker away, really. And that was a massive uh, credit to Leeds United, of course. But um, I think you've got to a point now with Matteo Joseph in particular, where I really think he'll be hungry. I said this yesterday. Obviously, he's played for the developmental squad. He's played for England as well, which I did not expect. Um, and I'm really seeing someone there who is chomping at the bit. He's hungry. And I'm, 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 I'd like to see him on the bench. If you're offering me him or Gelhart, I'm taking Matteo Joseph chat. And it'd be interesting to hear what you guys say on that. I think Gelhart's almost, almost shot his bolt, really. But when you're looking at the January movement, I always talk about stock being relatively high. For someone like Joe Gelhart, if his stock is relatively high. Leeds get better money for him. I think it should be a permanent sale of Joe Galhart in January. I don't think Lowen's going to do Leeds or, or, or the you know the the other club any good, to be honest with you. So I'd like to see him leave permanently. And I, I'd really, really be interested to see a Matteo Joseph uh, performance for Leeds in terms of him just coming on for a 10-minute cameo at certain points. And I think his press would really aid this side as well. I think sometimes Leeds lack in terms of a press. That obviously comes from Daniel Farker, but I think just as a characteristic, Matteo Joseph was brought in by Victor Orta as he sort of fit that Bielsa mould, didn't he, of pressing. So I'd really like to see that. I'd really like to see him involved. As I say, I've mentioned this on the stream yesterday, there were so many clubs in for him in, in the summer months. There's a reason behind that. So I'd like to see him be given a bit of a chance in stages of games, maybe where Leeds are winning. And I'd like to see him get on the score sheet. He looks like a really passionate lad who wants to do well. He's young, but this entire team is young. You've just been speaking about Willie Nonto. He was 19 years of age. We're coming on here all the time talking about these youngsters really, really setting the world alight. You know, look at our front four. You know, we forget that your pro is only 24 years old, but you've got Rutter at, what, 19? Christ, Nancy Somerville at 22, 23. So the entire team's young. Archie Gray at 17. So Matteo Joseph, really, he's not an anomaly. He's not an anomaly whatsoever. So I think it'd be interesting to see um, see him being given a chance. Uh, Daniel Agar's in the building with the Super Chat. Um, thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate that. You, you, you know, your Super Chat will be going back into the channel. Thank you. Uh, what I see with this team is uh, and, and owners is togetherness. And I think you're right, mate. And I think we got that once again from the press conference today. And it was really nice to hear those words from Daniel Farker and it gave me a real boost. Uh, Paul uh, says, uh, Connor, would you uh, play the first team in the FA Cup or give the younger ones a go? Paul, Paul, with the standard of opposition, without any disrespect, we're playing, I would be looking at rotating a little bit. The likes of Joseph, the likes of Gelhart, as I've just mentioned, maybe to get his stock a little bit higher. Could we see Archie Gray maybe move into that central space? Obviously, he's not been playing in that central space. You'd like to see maybe Jed Spence get 90 minutes, but I'm going to move on to Jed Spence in a little bit and, um, and I want to get your other guys' thoughts on that. Kamara's been amazing. Ampadu who's definitely not been at his best. Maybe he's getting tired. Yeah, 100%, Ben. I think he's there's peaks with different football players in, foot, in, in in the game. And I think what you've seen with Kamari is he's now suited to the system. He's realised that he can be a little bit more expansive. And he's realised probably a little bit how Daniel Farker plays because it's very different to what he'll have been used to, used, um, you know, to, to playing at Rangers in Scotland in the SPL. But also the standard of opposition. Let's make no bones about it. You know, the standard of opposition aside from Celtic and Rangers, is probably better in the Championship than the rest of the SPL. So Kamara will have had to get used to that. He was at Rangers for, what, five, six years? So it's a real bedding-in process. When you're coming from the SPL down south, there's not going to be an automatic click. It's going to take a while. And um, I think we're seeing that now from Gwen Kamara. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think, I think as many people have said, um, it's got to a point where you are seeing a little bit of fatigue from Ampadu. And I think in that double pivot, there has been better performances in the last month from Glenn Kamara. And that's been probably replicated in what you were seeing with the player of the month when Ampadu didn't get in there. So, yeah, Hannah says, um, 
Uh, we're a very emotional club. I was crossed with Willie in the summer, but not now. It doesn't seem as though he wants to leave it all and has done um, all uh, has, hasn't done since he's been allowed back in by Daniel. I'd agree with that, uh, Hannah. I think you spot on, spot on, and there's credit there for Amp uh, for for Willie Nyonso, but there's credit there for Daniel Farker as well. I think Daniel Farker almost went about the Willie Nyonso scenario with the parents head on, but also with the school teachers head on as well. It's like you know. I get it. You want to play the Premier League. I get the standard. I get that you were a, a decent player for us in the Premier League. But also, you need to knuckle down, fella. And now you've got to get the fans back on side. So there's two things that you need to do there. And I think Willie's, to be fair to him, he's 19 years of age. I think we, we forget that a lot. But I am team... team <laughs> sounds a bit wrong. Team Willie Nyon. So I was going to say team Willie then. But I know what you guys what you guys are like. Uh, Tom Johansson, are we signing you, Jose Mourinho as mascot? I don't think so, mate. It'd be interesting, though, wouldn't it? Um, Derard, loving the content, mate. I watch all your videos. Cheers, man. I really appreciate that. It genuinely means a lot, um, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, Gail, hello, hello, hello. Um, Bobby says, I really want to see uh, Joseph have a proper chance to see what he's all about. I'm in the same boat, mate. Uh, Rich Sullivan says, great to catch you, Connor. Joseph needs to get a chance. Yeah, it sounds like everybody is sort of on the same wavelength when it comes to Matteo Joseph, which is great to see. Spence in then rotate A, K and G over December. Obviously, that's the midfield, um, says Gavin. So, a lot of you guys have been looking at the thumbnail and thinking, Connor, what on earth are you doing? Is Jose Mourinho coming and playing for Leeds up front? Well, it'd be interesting, but no, he's not. Jose Mourinho's Roma are looking to be making the purchase, the official purchase, the permanent purchase of Diego Llorente. The centre-back was loaned to the Whites. Um, it was loaned by the Whites to the uh, Giallo Rossi back in January and is initially supposed to stay, uh, was initially uh, supposed to stay at the Italian side until next summer. Now, uh, the Metropolitan the magazine uh, comes up to explain why a permanent transfer might, may be done sooner than expected. Roma are in many injury problems in their side and it's giving the Leeds loanee a chance to play um, at multiple multiple games. The agreement between the clubs says that Giallo Rossi have an agreement to buy him for $5 million, uh, in the case that he plays 50% of their matches this season. And at this rate, it won't take long, says uh, the Metropoliana. Um, and apparently Roma are then said to be ready for the purchase, which could actually turn into a, a decent deal since they have been linked to more expensive centre-backs lately. And it's, it's, it's another one of those... Hey, Tony. It's another one of those as AJ says, where you, you are looking and we were speaking about it on the morning show. Um, you are looking and it's, it's, it's for me, it's frustration. I can't help but feel frustrated by it. And with all the positivity that we've been, been speaking about with the, the, you know, with this video and, and the current ownership and where, how, how much it's developed, there is, there is still a large part of me that's frustrated by the fact that we bought this kid Diego Urente from Real Sociedad, and there's no point crying over spilt milk, but we do have to discuss it. And it's another Leeds United transfer, uh, which is crazy. It's another one where we're going to be making a significant loss, a significant loss, but you know, five million quid, it's just nothing. It's absolutely nothing. And um, from 18, rising up to what was it, 21 million for Diego Urente, for us to be getting back five million euros it's it's just nuts for me. Um, and this agreement was in place, which I didn't actually realise it was in place. I know we've not spoken about Diego Urente a lot, but that's a fantastic deal for Roma just in terms of there's no real risk for it. Obviously, he's not going to be playing for them a lot when their centre-backs are fit, Chris Small and et cetera. But, you know, as a rotation option, I mean, five million quid is nothing in the championship, never mind Serie A. Um, and yeah, that's Euros as well. So it looks like Roma have got a good deal there. Leeds have been fleeced again by Victor Orta's wonderful recruitment in the past. And it looks like we're going to make probably a significant loss on a lot of the boys or a lot of the deserters that have gone out there. I'd probably say Jack Harrison is is the only one that we might, well, we will we will make profit on because we're going to get, you know, more than 11 million back for Jack. Um, but aside from that, it's going to be difficult for Leeds to make any money, any profit whatsoever on the deserters. So, you know, there's, I mean, Christensen, Aronson, you know, even Christensen at 10 million quid, at 10 million quid, which is what we bought him for. It's crazy that we're not going to make that money back, isn't it? You know, you look at 10 million, there's, there's no there's no real risk attached to it from, from a Leeds United perspective at the start. But to say we're not going to get that back for him, 
likely is nuts, isn't it? But yeah, Roma look like they're going to be making the purchase of Diego Urente soon. That could be done in January. So yeah, goodbye, Diego. Uh, he had a decent stint, uh, a really decent stint, a six-month spell where he was actually very, very good. But overall, when he when he got into it, he was one of the most erratic, scary, risky centre-backs I've ever seen in my life. And that's when we're in the league one days. You know, there was more composure in, in Paddy Kisnorbo and Neil Collins than there was in this guy. And I know it's a different level, but flipping heck, everything's relative, isn't it? This geezer was just nuts, absolutely nuts. And I was terrified any time, you know, teams were coming forward, especially the Premier League, Premier League sides, Jesus Christ, when they were coming forward and they were facing him, they'd have been loving it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, a lot of people discussing the the trans just transfers. Michael says, uh, Juventus should have gone for eight to 10 million. Uh, we are lucky to get to get five mil. Louis says, um, can we throw in Rasmus too? Uh, whatever happened to Darko? Is he on loan? Uh, I was looking forward to seeing him in the first. I think he had a bit of a downturn, didn't he, mate? Um, in performances, uh, you know, even when he was you know coming on for us, I don't think it was great. And yeah, I think his stock sort of gone down. High corner, we can't defend corners. We don't score from corners. If the pitch was round, we'd be world beaters. <laughs> You're not wrong, Billy. Uh, Neil Collins forgot about him. Uh, yeah, good riddance to bad rubbish. And I guess that I guess that is. I mean, Ben's Ben's just put a little bit of a paragraph here. The more I think of these old players, we can get rid of the better, uh, more for morale and our new dynamic. I think Brendan Amerson will be an interesting one in the summer. Doubt we get anything back for him. Yeah, I mean, this geezer's just got, I mean, he's got a cracking agent, hasn't he, Brendan Aronson? But yeah, I agree, mate. I think it's just, it's one of those where Leeds are just going to make criminal losses, criminal losses on these players. But but what can you do? What can you do? It is what it is. You, you know, for Victor Orta to, and, and Rad Rosani to get it as bad as they got it, you know, don't get me wrong, there's been some success stories. Elan Melier, uh, uh, um, Pascal Strauch, you know, Rafinha, players, players of that ilk. But the, the the amount of money that we spent, you can even go back to, I mean, Rodrigo, the amount we spent on him, the amount we got back, it's just crazy. Don't get me wrong, he had his good season, but yeah, it's a lot of money, wasn't it? And Leeds have just outlaid so much cash and just not got not got, not got anything back. And I think this Diego Urente one, when I read this story this evening, I just thought, Jesus Christ, that's another one. That that that's a really bad one as well. So as I think, I think morale wise i agree with what everyone is saying just get rid of them but when you just look at the actual business acumen and the recruitment behind it nuts absolutely crazy um so yeah but thank you uh, as gail says to victor also good the clean out take the losses and move on bigger and better yeah i'd agree mate i'd agree um, okay, so let's get on to uh, some positive uh, looks at tomorrow we're gonna have you preview out tomorrow everyone uh, but i just wanted to uh, discuss my 11 for tomorrow so <clears throat> uh some for, for for saturday but we're gonna have the main preview out tomorrow but yeah my my 11 is is as followed Um, i would make uh, no changes barring one which you guys might agree with and you might not agree with is it controversial it potentially is and it probably is uh, i would bring in jed spence and um, we heard today that he's fit he's ready to play um, I would rest Archie Gray for this one. I think you've pretty much got a like for like there. I think um, this is sort of the perfect game to throw him in. I think, um, uh, you know, his recovery speed when Blackburn uh, are counter-attacking, which they're very decent at, is going to be key. We saw that in the Sheffield Wednesday game. I think you know, putting him in for a game like this where it's almost you're away from home, so the pressure's off in a certain way, and I think he'd, he'd, he'd deal with the pressure, Jed Spence, but I think a Blackburn game, sort of a mid-table championship side where he's going to be able to deal with their winger, their wingers, even though they've got some decent wingers there, um, I think it's a, a good game for him. I think it's a really good game for him. I think we're going to be really aided by his movement going forward as well. And ultimately, I think the big thing here is I think Archie needs to rest. And, you know, we're getting fit and firing for Tuesday, Wednesday. So I would be keeping the exact same 11, but I would put Archie on the bench for this one. And I would be bringing Jed Spence in. And I think it'd really start building some momentum with Jed. Jed had come back in for the midweek game. And I think you've got to start him at some point. Now, a lot of people would say, Connor, you're absolutely mental. You don't change your winning team and I don't think Farker will I honestly don't think Farker will but I think at some point you've got to bring Jed Spence in there's going to have to be a point um but I do feel that we have to come back to the arc of who Archie Gray is he's an extremely talented youngster he's also 17 
you know, I, I I brought this point up a lot because when I was younger, I was a massive fan of Michael Owen. I loved Michael Owen. I played up front. I adored Michael Owen. And the injuries he went through because Liverpool just played him and played him and played him and played him and played him, and played him at a young age um, was astronomical and it affected the rest of his career. I think you've got to manage Archie. You've really got to manage him. We absolutely love him. He's going to be a top player. You've heard how much praise I've been I've been putting on his shoulders. I actually don't think the quality difference will be anything. I don't think it's going to be drastic between both of them. Um, but what I do think is you might get more from Jed going forwards. And I think you've just got to manage him. You've got to manage him. And we've also, everybody, got Jed Spence. Let me say that again. We've got Jed Spence, one of the best wing backs I've ever seen at championship level on the bench, ready to go. So at some point, there has to be some rotation. I understand with Farkas Norwich side, he never did it. I understand with this lead side, he doesn't want to do it. And I get it. But we've got to manage Archie. We've got to manage Archie. There's been a lot of stress put on him in terms of the expectation this season, which he wouldn't have expected. His family wouldn't have expected. Fark wouldn't have expected. The Leeds board wouldn't have expected. But it is what it is. I th- I, I think, in my opinion, um, we've got to we you know we we've got to give Archie Gray a rest. Um, agree on Spence Connor. Uh, hi Connor, it's good to catch you live for one. Say, mate, uh, do you think Bamford leaves in the next one or two windows, who, uh, or do you think his wages are a problem? Yeah, I do, Lee. I think his wage. I mean, his wages are massive. I know that for a fact. <laughs> his wages are big. He took the cut as as did all the Leeds players, but his wages are big. Um, for championship level, still they were they were they were ridiculous in the Premier League for what we, what we got back, you know, as well. So, um, mm. uh, Metro. YTSE says, uh, spot on Connor. Uh, Spence is better at right back than gra- than Gray. Uh, Byron at a young age, yeah, that's another one. Gav, that's another good example. Um, Archie's another one as well as Lewis Cook when Leeds were overplaying him, overplaying him, overplaying him in the championship. And 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 listen, he's come back now, but he was knackered with injuries. The, the stress put on youngsters is massive. We all think our youngsters have have just got it all in the tank, but they're not physically developed yet as well. A lot of them are are are, are almost developing on the job. You know, when they're put into this, you, you, know, you look at Jude Bellingham three years ago and look at him right now. He's a real man. He's athletic right now, even though he's still so young. He was a kid back then and Archie still has a very skinny frame. He's still not fully built into it. He's not a man yet. He's not a man yet. And yeah, I think we really need to manage him well. We have to manage him well. Archie's played a lot, says uh, Jay. Um, and having him on the bench is great cover option for, for, for Kamara and Ampadu. Yeah, exactly. So, something else that I wanted to discuss was why January has taken on another level again. Daniel Farkas' press conference uh, today, we learn that he'll be fine, but we learned that Sam Byram had another niggle earlier on in the week. We do these streams, try and do them twice a day. And it's like I'm I'm banging on the drum. But I just hope within the ranks at Ellen Road, they're thinking, we can't rely on this. We can't rely on this now. For Sam to have another, another niggle at the beginning of the week, but he's okay now, it's a worry. I mean, he was injured the week before. And then before that, he was injured three weeks before that. We know he takes, according to him, there's a machine that goes with him to every away game to keep him, you know, to keep his legs, you know, you know, in decent shape. We know his injury record. I'm just praying they have a target ready. They have a target ready. And if they don't have a target ready, fine. Just I hope we don't go down this stupid angle of everything, of Orta and Kinnear when they used to come out and say, oh, we're, we're waiting for an opportunistic uh, signing to come along. Why don't we just have a target? Let's have a target. Let's go get him in January. I think left back is just huge, everyone. And I understand there's his vibes FC now. We've seen Byram. He's been excellent so far. I'm not disputing that. The only thing I've ever disputed when it's come to Byram is his injury record. I think he's an all right player. I think he's I think he's been really overperforming for Leeds, which has been massive credit to him. Massive credit to Daniel Farker. But left back is just huge. It's huge. And why? Because the wingers, even at championship level, are very good, relative, very good at this standard. You know, Junior Furpo even said it in his podcast. That he turned around and said, you know, in the, essentially in the top two tiers, you don't get you don't get wingers as good as this really anywhere else in the world. And you don't. They're so dynamic out wide. They're so quick. 
know, they can play either side, they can play up front, some of them can play central midfield. The versatility is unbelievable. They can play cam. You know, you look at our wingers, it's electric. So you have to have good fullbacks. And good fullbacks are very, very beneficial with us going forward, but they're also very, very beneficial with us at the back, obviously. And they've got to get this right. They've got to they've got to get this right. And I think, yeah, Diggler said, um, you know, Archie can cover for Byram if necessary, mate. That is just, for me, it's mental. It's mental. And I get what you're saying, Diggler. I completely get what you're saying. Um, and, and it's logistical what you're saying as well. But, and the, but then you'll get people saying, well, Spence can cover for Archie. Why don't we just get a left back? Why don't we just go get a left back? And actually have a proper left back for the first time since Charlie Taylor. And probably before Taylor, it was Stephen Craney. Let's just, just, let's just go get a left back and actually have a left back. There's, there's tons of them out there. Can we stop playing right footers left back as number one? And can we actually get just a consistent left back? That's what that's honestly, if we ended the transfer window, keep it all of our players and actually just getting a left back, I'd be satisfied. I'd be overjoyed if we went and did more business, but I'd be satisfied. I really would be. But for them to ignore a left back again with what's been going on, even just at the first half of this point, the first half of the season, been three months with what's happened with Firpo, what's happened with Byram, the fact he's he's got more niggles at the start this week, but they should be he should be okay for Blackburn. It's massively worrying. It really is, and especially as as um, Ban Jax has just said, no way is Byram playing every game of the Christmas period. He's got to, he's got to, or, or what we're looking at then, Shackleton which, if we're being honest, none of us really want. And then you're looking at maybe Archie at left back. It's, it's not fair on Archie. It's not fair on Archie. It really isn't. But we don't have much choice, and that's what that's what this is all about, is preparation. You've got to prepare for these eventualities, which we're all screaming for in the summer. They've got to go and do a left back. It's priority. It's essential. It's absolutely essential, in my opinion. Um for the January window. Uh, I agree, Connor. Again, Diggler, uh, we do need to buy a left back, a centre back, and a right back. Maybe if Spence doesn't come back, uh, uh, the last decent um, and consistent left back was Charlie Taylor. I agree, mate. Um, it's mad. Yeah, Ryan says it's mad how many windows we've needed the left back. Square pegs, FC Jamie's on the money. Square pegs, Paul said the same. Uh, Rory D. Spire has been class. Remember him in a previous stint when we beat Spurs in the cup, had G Bell on his back. He is Rory, but, but that's that you correct. But that's not what we're discussing here. We're not discussing his performance levels. We're discussing the injury record, which he's been plagued with throughout his entire career. And we're still we're still seeing problems where Leeds are literally having to... I'd be surprised if he was training full on. I would. I'd be surprised if he was training and being asked to do what maybe some of the other lads are being asked to do. I, I would. You know, I played at a decent level with a few lads who had injury records and they'd really ease it off really, really easy off because you'd want them ready for Saturday, for Sunday, for Tuesday, for Wednesday. Let's bear in mind, we're not even playing just Saturday and Sundays now as well. It's not one game a week, it's two games a week. You know what I mean? This Christmas period is going to be absolutely barbaric when it comes to games as well. And games that we have to win, leads have to be perfect. We all know that. So we can't be slacking um, in, in many positions. Um Luke says, uh, Connor, I gave 49ers benefit of the doubt in the summer, but if they don't get a left back in Jan, I'll be concerned. I will be, mate. I really will be. Um, Archie is the new Stu Dallas. Uh, Aaron says, uh, what left back options would you like to see, Connor? To be honest, mate, I've got, I'd probably go for two. Matty Target is available. Um, and he'd be, he'd be a very, very decent signing for me. And Ian Matson at Burnley, I think they're the two who, I, who I'd, I'd love to see Leeds go in for. I really would. Now, the, the reason I go for Target, I've mentioned this before, is because I think Matson is more of a... He's much better, but Furpo in terms of bombing up, bombing up and down, I think Target is a proper standard left back. You know, Charlie Taylor-esque, um, which is absolutely sound for me. Uh, just a steady Eddie left back who's going to give you a 7 out of 10 every week. Um, and, and he's a left-footed. Yeah, and, and I, I, I agree with you, Jim. Um, we do need we do need two left backs. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's 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 uh, who I'd go for. Um, no, mate, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd, th th this is the thing with Alioski. Look, he's he's folk hero. He's a cult hero. All this sort of stuff. Um, but he wasn't a good defender. He was good going forward, he, many goals, but you know, and all this sort of stuff. But we bought him as a left winger. We bought him as a left winger from Switzerland, wasn't it? Um, no, it's Lugano. 
Switzerland. Get me on those pub quizzes. Um, but yeah, we bought him from Lugano as a left winger, you know, and we put him as left back. This is the thing. We saw it Stu Dallas, right, right back or centre mid, whatever. Put him left back. You know, Berardi, right back, put him left back. <laughs> Strauk, put him left back, centre back. It's a joke. It is a joke. They have to sort this out because... It's not fair on Byram either. It's not. So, um, yeah, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we will be back tomorrow uh, with the uh, with the preview. Uh, we're going to be speaking um, about about loads of other things tomorrow as well. But please make sure you're liking the content. I hope you're enjoying the morning and the evening previews. If you want to go over to Patreon, we're going to have loads of stuff over there in the next week or two, really. Um, there's the generation leads on there last night as well. But, guys, there's around about 500 of you top. We nearly got through it all, didn't we? But the microphone just went at the end there, you bugger. Um, but yeah, guys, make sure you're liking, commenting, uh, subscribing. Um, and uh, yeah, Diggle, just seeing it, mate, right at the end. We nearly got through a full one there, mate. Um, and guys, I will see you in a bit. Cheers.